Hi, my name is Sam Cheney and I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer. Today I wanted to talk to you about Geomagic ControlX and give you a quick overview of the software. ControlX is a piece of metrology and inspection software produced by Octon and you can use it for comparing mesh data to scan data. ControlX is laid out on a parasolid CAD kernel so it looks and behaves very similarly to CAD. So if you have experience with CAD packages like SOLIDWORKS, you can get up and running and learn the tools very, very quickly. At the top, we have our toolbars where we can do various functions as I'll get into later in this video. In the middle, we have our model viewer. Here we can pan, rotate, zoom in to various features and areas of the model that we are designing an inspection report for. On the left, we have our model manager, and this I like to think of is very similarly to a feature tree like you have in SOLIDWORKS. As you create alignments and other inspection points, they all populate in this results data. At the bottom, we have our tabular view, so we can look at dimensions and inspection points in more detail. And on the right, we have our properties tab and display tab, so we can turn things on and off depending on how we want to view the model viewer. Now I've already opened a file, but if you wanted to, you can import specific reference geometry or CAD files or meshes or open up an existing project. ControlX supports a whole host of different files. So regardless of the file input you're bringing in, it's likely ControlX will be able to support it. Now, as you can see, if I rotate my model around, the mesh data in blue is not aligned to the silver or gray CAD data. So the first thing I want to do is create an initial alignment. I can choose between quick or precise, and I'm gonna go with quick because after this, I'm going to do another alignment type. As you can see, it's a much closer alignment between the silver and the blue, and you can see them kind of overlaid and spotted between the two. That's a sign of a good alignment. Now to go a step further, I can do another type of alignment, like a best fit, or if I have datums, I could actually set up a datum alignment where I match the drawing datums and actually constrain the certain datum features to each other and create an alignment that way. For this, I'm going to create a best fit alignment. Now, best fit alignment essentially is like an auto alignment where you give the computer some input parameters like the sampling ratio, the iteration count or the maximum deviation and then it will iterate the best fit of the two data sets together. And now we've done our best fit alignment you can see that the two alignments we created are actually inputted on the results data in the alignments tab. Now that I have a good best fit alignment I can actually start to do my inspection report. And the first thing I like to do is a 3D compare. This gives me a really good overall idea of where the part is within tolerance and out of tolerance, so I can have a really good look about what features I might need to take additional measurements for. And hit OK, and I could adjust the values of my color bar, adjust the tolerance, etc. but I'm gonna leave everything as default for now. If I rotate around, I can see that most of my part is within tolerance in that green area, but I do have some areas of yellow and orange up here, and that is an indication that the mesh is too high from tolerance. If I go underneath, I can see that the underside is actually blue or too low in comparison to the CAD data. So what I can tell quickly without taking any dimensions is this arm is actually twisted up out of the uh, out of the page so now I can start actually creating some more detailed information for just this area now to not add any more confusion I'm going to turn off the 3d compare just by highlighting this eye here and now I can just see my CAD data to create dimensions I can just go to the dimensions tab and use the smart dimension tool now this works very similarly to the smart dimension tool when you're working on a drawing in SOLIDWORKS. I just click the two areas or two planes that I want to create a dimension and then I can edit my tolerance here. So if we do two degrees and you can see that it updates automatically. 
I hit OK to accept the dimension. I can keep creating dimensions with that Smart Dimension tool and probing areas that I am most concerned with. I can take a radius dimension here, again, adjust the tolerance. And if I wanted to, I could actually set up the tolerance to always be a certain value if I have a tolerance range that I'm using often. If I wanted to change this dimension to be a diameter from a radius, I can just unclick the radius button there and hit OK. I can also use some more specific dimension tools like the linear dimension, angular dimension or radial dimension if I'm taking something that the smart dimension tool may think of as a different dimension. Here I can create an angular dimension between these two planes here. And again, just adjust the tolerance. Along with creating dimensions, I can actually add datums to my CAD model to match how it's set up on the drawing. And I can also create some additional GD and T. I can create a flatness callout on this face here. And I can create a perpendicular callout as well. And I can specify it to be against datum A. You can see that they're actually been populated in group number one. Now, if I wanted to, I could add another group by just hitting the add group button and I can minimize group one and start adding dimensions to group two. Again, I'm going to focus on a different area. So let's do some more dimensions, maybe a plane to plane measurement over here. And a radius dimension over here. Once I'm happy with my groupings of dimensions, I can actually go to the quick start and hit the generate report button up here. Here, it will open up the report generation template where I can add some more customized information like title, subject, and product information about the part. I can also choose between what information I want to be included. So for example, I can remove that initial alignment that we first created because I'm just concerned with my best fit alignment. I can also remove or move groups one, two, and other features to have the report laid out exactly how I want it. And once I'm happy, I can hit generate and see a preview of my report. Once the report generates, you can actually then start editing the layout. You can add some graphs if you would like to, or you can just scroll through to make sure it's exactly what you want. You can see here that we have our three or four views of the measured and the reference data so we can see exactly the part we're talking about, how the alignment has looked, and then the results of our 3D comparison. Scrolling down, we actually have more information about the various groups of results that we've taken, and we can quickly look at things that are within tolerance or out of tolerance by looking at the color that the, the dimension is actually set up as. We have more information down here about the exact values of the various dimensions that we've taken. And then when we're happy, we can create a PDF or a PowerPoint or an Excel sheet and generate the report and then send it on to the next person who needs to read it. So that was a quick overview of Geomagic Controlix. I hope you found this interesting and useful, but if you want to learn more, especially about some of the more advanced tools of Geomagic Controlix, please get in contact with us and we will set up an in-person demo for you. Thank you.